CNS, even though most of us love it, there still is a problem with CNS is that it is extremely, extremely huge and exhaustive. Most people say that how do we study CNS? By the time we study the cortex, we have forgotten spinal cord, we study spinal cord, we forget neuropathy. So today we are going to start with the basic classification of the central nervous system disorders. So how do we do that? So we are going to take up the large CNS and categorize CNS into two types. The broadly CNS can be classified into the pyramidal system and the extra pyramidal system. Pyramidal and the extra pyramidal system. Whenever the next tip is that when we classify any particular disease or any particular topic, we have to know two things about it. That what is the basis of the classification and number two, what is the need for the classification. If I have to ask you that what is the basis of the classification, there are many answers. Anatomically, they are different areas. Functionally, they are different areas. I agree with you. But a human brain remembers the knowledge which is useful to it. So I want us to understand why do we need to classify the disorders of the CNS. So for the next few hours of the central nervous system class, I want you to imagine yourself as neurologist. Sitting in the AC clinic of a neurologist, the most common symptom that comes to a neurologist is a focal neurological deficit. A person walks in with a weakness of the leg, weakness of extremity, weakness of the cranial nerve. So the most common symptom that comes to the neurology clinic is focal neurological deficit. So the question that is asked to all of us from MBBS to MD to DM is that where is the lesion? What is the anatomical localization of the CNS lesion? If a person has got a focal neurological deficit, we all of us want to know where is the lesion. For where is the lesion is why we need to classify. So I am going to put you in the clinician's shoes. So let me tell that the patient has come with a neurological complaint that is a focal neurological deficit. So first step I want to differentiate where is the lesion? Is it the pyramidal tract or the extra pyramidal tract? How do we differentiate between the two? Well, pyramidal system extends from the cortex till the spinal cord. The pyramidal system extends from the cortex till the spinal cord that is the upper motor neuron part of the pyramidal system and the anterior horn cell anterior horn cell to the muscle which is the lower motor neuron part of the pyramidal system. So the pyramidal system further classified into upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron. So in short the pyramidal tract starts from the cortex and ends at the muscle that is pyramidal system anatomy for you. Extra pyramidal system consists of the basal ganglia complex. Extra pyramidal system consists of the basal ganglia complex. The extra pyramidal consists of the basal ganglia complex which includes substantia nigra, the caudate nucleus, the putamen. So this is the anatomical extent of the pyramidal and the extra pyramidal system respectively. This is about anatomy of pyramidal system. What is the physiology of pyramidal and extra pyramidal system? The pyramidal system is called as the dominant motor pathway. It is called the dominant motor pathway. And the extra pyramidal is called as the accessory motor pathway. So why do we use this different terminology? Both of them are belonging to the motor system. The pyramidal system being the dominant motor pathway because it is the one which plans, it is the one which initiates and executes all motor movements. The pyramidal system is the dominant motor pathway because it plans, initiates and executes all motor movement while the accessory pathway only coordinates.
the extra pyramidal system coordinates that is fine tunes the movement done by the pyramidal tract that is why the extra pyramidal is called as the accessory motor pathway once we know the anatomy and physiology we can easily apply it and understand the medicine part of it so let us put it that if there is a defect in the pyramidal system or if there is a defect in the extra pyramidal system what would be the clinical presentation the pyramidal system being the dominant pathway the main symptom would be loss of power when the loss of power is disproportionate to the disorder of tone to the disorder of tone we can say that the lesion is most likely in the pyramidal system while in extra pyramidal it is the disorder of tone the disorder of tone is disproportionate to the loss of power to the loss of power is a feature of the extra pyramidal system let us give me an example example of the pyramidal system let me take hemiplegia and example of extra pyramidal let me take parkinson's disease as we all know in a patient of hemiplegia which we have all presented from mbbs days we know that there can be power grade zero and there may be spasticity that is increased tone of the muscle which is mild to moderate while in extra pyramidal disorder like parkinson disease again the patient is unable to move but when you examine the power of the patient you are able to see that the power is 4 plus then why he or she is unable to perform the duties well that is because of the rigidity that is hypertonia rigidity is the problem loss of power is the problem and this is one of the most important clues for anatomical localization of the lesion so let me go back and again start that if a person gets comes to the clinic with focal neurological deficit you are expected to see which is dominantly affected the power is dominantly affected it is a pyramidal disease when the tone is dominantly affected it is a extra pyramidal disease and that is how we need to start anatomically localizing the lesion let us take it to the next step let us forget extra pyramidal system for some time and let us focus and discuss in detail the disorders of the pyramidal system the pyramidal system as we wrote down is further classified into two levels <coughs> we have the upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron the pyramidal system is further divided into the upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron again following the same pattern anatomy followed by the lesion upper motor neuron consists from cortex to the spinal cord and lower motor neuron starts from anterior horn cell and extends till the muscle extends till the muscle that is lower motor neuron for you furthermore how will you differentiate how will you identify where is the lesion is it umn or lmn the rule is 3 out of 5 what are we going to see let's check this first we are going to look at the tone we are going to look at the reflexes deep tendon reflexes and the abdominal reflex we are going to look at the plantar that is also called as your babinski sign and lastly we are going to look for muscle wasting so to differentiate the lesion with between upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron we have to assess five components the tone deep tendon reflexes abdominal reflex the plantar and the presence of muscle wasting in upper motor neuron the tone is hypertonia the deep tendon reflexes are exaggerated the abdominal reflex is lost the plantar is extensor what we call as upgoing plantar and wasting is extremely rare feature of upper motor neuron disease 
when you compare it with a disease of lower motor neuron the tone is hypotonia also called flaccidity the deep tendon reflexes are diminished or absent the abdominal reflex is preserved the plantars are flexor or mute wasting is a common feature of the disease wasting is a common presentation of the disease and if you have 3 out of 5 components present in the patient you can confidently differentiate where is the lesion is it upper motor neuron or lower motor neuron so we have got a patient of neurology in the clinic with focal neurological deficit we on assessment we see that the loss of power is disproportionate to the loss of tone hence we said that it is a pyramidal lesion in a pyramidal lesion i assess these five components and if i find that five components three out of five belong to the upper motor neuron column i can say lesion is in upper motor neuron that is between the cortex till the spinal cord if three belong to the lower motor neuron lesion lies between anterior horn cell and the muscle this is how we localize the lesion based on this anatomical axis we are going to prepare the neuro axis of the cns and classify the disorders of the cns